Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover the jumping side of Lyra's Locomotion State Machine. Let's get started. Alright everyone, I'm inside of the Locomotion State Machine for the main animation blueprint here in Lyra. And in this video we're going to take a look at the jump side of the State Machine. So to begin we have a jump sources alias which can we can enter into this jump side of the State Machine from if we are inside of the idle start cycle stop or pivot states. If we are inside of any of these states, we are going to be evaluating or checking the uh, values of these two bowlings, is jumping and is falling, and seeing if we need to transition into either of these states at any time, because this transition is just set to true always, and this uh, node here is not a state, it is a conduit. So it just exists to facilitate transitions from whatever comes in to whatever state it is uh, has a transition leading out to. So if at any time while the character is in any of the states that are checked here, and either is jumping becomes true or is falling becomes true, the character will enter into either jump start or jump apex. We'll look at jump start first. Now you'll find that even though we're still using the linked anim layer stuff in these jump states, many of them are much less complex than anything in the other half of the locomotion state machine. I'm going to head over into the item anim layers base blueprint, and I'm going to go ahead and find that full body jump start state. And we just have a sequence player with an animation. There's no variable this time, which plays and is set to not to loop. And that's it. We have, of course, the same layered blend for bone with the hip fire stuff that many of the other states um, or layers have. But that's it for that layer. It's just playing an animation sequence, essentially. That's well, that's the unique thing. It does suffer from many other layers that have that, um, that blend in that hip fire stuff for when the character shoots their weapon. You can exit jump start into jump start loop once um, if as soon as that animation is completed because automatic rule based on sequence player in state is set to true. The jump start loop is another linked anim layer. And this time we have a looping sequence player that plays a jump start loop animation, which is just a loop for the first half of your jump where you are going up and have upwards velocity. And that's it for this state. And that's really it for this layer. So from jump start loop, if this condition is met, our time to jump apex is less than 0.4, we enter into the jump apex state. We'll also enter into the jump apex state if is falling is true when we enter into this state machine or this side of the state machine here. So, this jump apex state, again, it's just a linked layer, and if I pull that linked layer up, we have a sequence player, this time it's not set to loop, and it's playing a jump apex animation. And I'll go ahead and pull that up so you guys can see what it is. All right, so it's just to the an animation where we are essentially going up to the apex and then coming down from the apex. It's a transitory animation that goes between the jump start loop and the jump fall loop. And again, let's this sequence evaluator, this I mean sequence player, is not looping, so that as soon as this animation is finished. this uh, transition, which is an automatic rule-based uh, sequence player in state transition. Um, so once this is, animation is done, we'll transition into fall loop. Now fall loop is just the same as the jump start loop, but just with the falling animation. And I accidentally or unintentionally closed out of the um, item animator's base, so I'm opening that up again. 
and let's go ahead and find the jump fall loop state. Here it is. Just another sequence player with its looping playing a jump fall loop animation. Now once our ground distance is less than 200, we go into the fall land state, which has a link layer. And this time, we get a bit more complicated. This time we have a sequence evaluator with a dynamic explicit time and two bound functions. I set up fall land anim and I set up and an update fall land anim. I'll open up both of these functions. The setup fall land anim sets the explicit time of the evaluator to zero. And the update fall land anim function distance matches that fall land animation to um, with the ground distance variable that's set in the main animation graph. So if we head back over into this, we can see this is named, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. This is named jump fall land. I'll search that up. And as we can see, we have a ground distance um, curve here. And as soon as that reaches zero, it's going to blend out of this. Actually, it might not be as soon as it reaches zero. If I head back over into this, we'll see. Yep, as soon as is on ground is true. So once that distance is set zero and we've detected that we're on the ground, we enter into this end in air conduit, which we can which has two transitions out of it. A one with the blend prior with a priority order of two and one with a priority order of one. So the cycle alias is always going to be used first if this condition is true, which is has acceleration. If it's not true, it's going to enter straight into the idle state because this transition is set to always be true. And finally we can enter into this end in air conduit from this jump fault interrupt sources alias, which can be entered from jump start, jump apex, fall lamp, jump start loop, or fall loop. If the is on ground boolean is true, then we're going to exit this side of the state machine and back into the grounded locomotion side of the state machine. And that is finally it for the locomotion state machine in Lyra. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. There are more Lyra locomotion videos explained on the way, and we're almost done with the series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.